Imagine you are in a room filled with doors, each leading to a different destination. One door, the most vibrant and appealing, leads to a place of abundance and financial prosperity. Yet despite its allure, it remains firmly shut. Like these doors, our lives are often filled with opportunities for financial breakthroughs, but certain habits and mindsets keep them closed. Just as you need the right key to open a locked door, you need the right approach to unlock the blessings that God has in store for you. Today, I will explore five common hindrances that either block or have a detrimental effect on our financial prosperity. I will uncover these barriers and guide you on how to dismantle them, paving the way for God's abundance in your life. I am also going to pray a powerful prayer with you in the mighty name of Jesus. So watch until the end and open your hearts to receive the blessings of this prayer. My friends, the scripture in James 4 verse 3 reminds us, you ask and do not receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your pleasures. This verse underlines the profound truth that sometimes the blockade to our blessings isn't from external forces, but from within. It invites us to introspect, to reflect on our motives and desires, ensuring they align with God's will and purpose for our lives. This scripture gently nudges us towards a path of self-awareness and spiritual maturity where our prayers are not just requests for personal gain, but earnest dialogue seeking alignment with the divine plan. It's a powerful reminder that when our hearts are in the right place, our prayers become powerful conduits for God's blessings and grace to flow into our lives. Now, let us explore five significant barriers to financial prosperity understanding their impact, and learning how to navigate past these obstacles on our journey to abundance and blessings. Number one, lack of faith. Faith is the cornerstone of our relationship with God. It is the key to blessings. Hebrews 11 verse 6 tells us, But without faith it is impossible to please Him, for he who comes to God must believe that He is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Faith goes beyond believing that God exists. It's about trusting his power and his love for us. Imagine faith as the key to a locked door. Without it, the most splendid door remains closed. Doubt, on the other hand, acts as a barrier to faith. It's like placing a block in front of the door to blessings. You stand before it, unable to open it, not because it's locked, but because you doubt your ability to do so. Consider the story of Peter walking on water, as told in Matthew 14, verses 29 to 31. His faith allowed him to do the miraculous, but it was doubt that caused him to falter. My friends, to grow in faith, James 1, verses 6 to 7, advises us, but let him ask in faith, with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. You can strengthen your faith through regular prayer, immersing yourself in God's word, and surrounding yourself with people of strong faith. Also, Speaking faith into your life and actively exercising your faith are essential practices. They transform beliefs into tangible actions and words. For instance, you can powerfully affirm your trust in God's provision and care by proclaiming God's promises over your life, such as declaring, I am more than a conqueror through him who loves me or my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Such declarations 
not only fortify your own spirit, but also showcase the strength and reliability of placing our trust in the Lord. Number two, poor money management or mismanagement of resources. The concept of stewardship is deeply embedded in the essence of our spiritual journey. It's about the wise and thoughtful handling of the resources that God has generously placed in our care. Luke 16 verse 11 challenges us. Therefore, if you have not been faithful in the unrighteous wealth, who will entrust to you the true riches? This verse prompts us to reflect on our financial integrity and stewardship, suggesting that our management of earthly riches directly impacts the trust we are granted with greater and more eternal blessings. It's like not giving the keys to your house to someone who can't take care of their own home. God seeks trustworthy stewards for His blessings. Therefore, stewardship extends beyond mere financial management. It is a testament to our trustworthiness and reverence for the divine gifts bestowed upon us. The habits of poor financial management are many. It spans from lack of budgeting, impulsive spending, and neglect in so many areas. These habits are comparable to termites silently gnawing away at a wooden door, initially unnoticeable, yet they gradually erode the door's integrity until it becomes incapable of opening even when unlocked. Poor financial management can erode our financial stability. Proverbs 21 verse 20 teaches us there is desirable treasure and oil in the dwelling of the wise, but a foolish man squanders it. To be wise stewards, we must adopt practical financial measures and plans, allocate our resources wisely, and seek God's wisdom in our financial decisions. I am going to share with you some financial wisdom that I personally adhere to as well. It's crucial to use your resources whether cash or otherwise, in ways that align with God's principles. Exercise discernment in how you spend your money. For instance, avoid supporting activities that contradict your values or beliefs, such as gambling or investing in businesses that promote sexual immorality or harmful habits like smoking. Also, it's essential to steer clear of accepting jobs or even gifts or pursuing an increase in wealth through unjust or unethical means. Every financial gain should be weighed against the scales of integrity and righteousness. It's not just about financial gain. It's about ensuring that your financial decisions reflect your commitment to living a life that honors God and respects the dignity and well-being of others. Number three, the snare of debt. Debt can be a heavy burden, like a chain keeping the door of financial breakthrough closed, holding us back, blocking the path to financial success. Proverbs 22 verse seven warns, the rich rules over the poor and the borrower is servant to the lender. This profound truth underscores the oppressive nature of debt highlighting its potential to enslave and diminish one's autonomy or freedom. The parable of the unmerciful servant in Matthew 18, verses 23 to 35, illustrates how being unforgiving in finances can impact our overall prosperity. Escaping the clutches of debt necessitates a strategic and disciplined approach. To escape the trap of debt, you need to prioritize paying off what you owe, cut unnecessary expenses, and negotiate with creditors where possible. Avoid accumulating new debt and live within your means. Remember, the Lord shall supply all your needs according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. In our financial endeavors, it is imperative to seek and follow God's guidance as Psalm 37, verse 21 reminds us. 
the wicked borrows and does not repay, but the righteous shows mercy and gives. This scripture not only highlights the moral aspect of financial dealings, but also underscores the importance of aligning our economic actions with divine principles, ensuring that our financial habits reflect integrity and generosity. Consider that the principle of sowing and reaping is a cornerstone of biblical financial wisdom. Therefore, managing our debts responsibly, with integrity and diligence, paves the way for a bountiful harvest of financial freedom and abundance. Ultimately, your goal is not just to get out of debt, but to remain free from its burdensome grip. Breaking free from debt is the first significant step towards financial independence, but staying out of debt ensures a future of financial stability and peace of mind. Also, Deuteronomy 28 verse 12 reminds us, the Lord will open to you his good treasure, the heavens, to give the rain to your land in its season, and to bless all the work of your hand. You shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. This verse is part of the blessings promised for obedience, emphasizing financial stability and independence as rewards for following God's commandments. Number four, lack of generosity. My friends, generosity is more than kindness. It's a kingdom principle. Proverbs 11 verses 24 to 25 tells us, there is one who scatters yet increases more, and there is one who withholds more than is right, but it leads to poverty. The generous soul will be made rich, and he who waters will also be watered himself. This scripture beautifully illustrates the divine cycle of giving and receiving, emphasizing that true prosperity flows from a heart that freely gives, knowing that in God's economy, generosity is the seed for abundance and blessing. The story of the widow's might in Mark 12, verses 41 to 44, shows that God values the heart behind the giving not the amount. A mindset of selfishness or greed can block the flow of prosperity. When we hold too tightly to what we have, we prevent room for God's blessings to flow. Trust in God's provision and open your hands in generosity, knowing that He will refill them. Also consider that cultivating a generous heart is not just with money, but also with time, talents, or other resources. My friends, sowing or giving into God's kingdom is not just a financial transaction. It's a spiritual principle that transcends the physical realm. When we give our tithes and offerings, it's essential to understand that God doesn't need our money. Instead, He invites us to participate in a divine exchange where our natural sowing or giving becomes a seed in the spiritual realm fostering growth and abundance beyond our understanding. As we give, we're reminded of the truth in 2 Corinthians 9 verse 6. But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. This isn't merely about the quantity we give, but the heart with which we sow. When we release our tithes and offerings, we're not just parting with our resources. We're investing in the eternal, aligning ourselves with God's purposes and acknowledging His sovereignty over all aspects of our lives. This act of faith and obedience becomes a declaration of our trust in God's provision and a testament to His faithfulness, as promised in Malachi 3 verse 10. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house and try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. By stepping into this promise, we position ourselves under the cascade of God's abundant blessings, 
ready and open to receive more than we could ever imagine or contain. Embracing this promise requires faith, but I can assure you, once you step into this realm of trust and generosity, your life will transform in ways you never imagine. Also, for those who may not be familiar with the concept, a tithe is traditionally defined as 10% of your income, while an offering, on the other hand, is anything that you give beyond the tithe, whether more or less reflecting a voluntary act of worship and a way to express gratitude for God's blessings. Both tithes and offerings are ways to honor God with your resources, overcome selfishness and greed, as well as acknowledging His provision in your life. My friends, generosity and giving is a cycle. When we give, it doesn't end there. In fact, in God's kingdom, that's just the beginning. The more we give, the more blessings can flow into and through our lives. And number five, neglecting God's wisdom and guidance. Divine guidance is crucial in our journey. Proverbs 3 verses 5 to 6 urges us, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your paths. Ignoring God's direction can lead us to frustration and lack. Seek God first in your financial decisions, ensuring that your efforts are blessed and guided by His hand. Tuning into the gentle nudges of the Holy Spirit is similar to aligning ourselves with a divine compass, guiding us through life's challenging financial landscape. By being obedient to His leading, we position ourselves to make the best financial decisions, ones that are not just profitable, but also righteous and in harmony with God's will. The Holy Spirit's guidance often manifests through subtle prompts or profound realizations, opening our eyes to opportunities that we might otherwise overlook and enabling us to walk through doors that lead to blessings and abundance. He may communicate with us through dreams, visions, or unexpected encounters, each serving as a beacon, guiding us towards decisions and paths that align with divine wisdom and purpose. By staying attuned and responsive to these heavenly directives and adhering to the financial wisdom found in God's Word, we navigate life, not by sight alone, but strengthened by the insight and foresight that only God can provide. My friends, the key to financial breakthrough is in our hands. It's made of faith, wise stewardship, freedom from debt, generosity, and divine wisdom and guidance. When we grasp this key firmly, acknowledging its components with sincerity and action, we unlock the doors to prosperity and step into the abundance that God has prepared for us. Now, to all those within the sound of my voice, let us go to the Lord in prayer. I want you to pray this prayer with me so that you can have all the blessings of this prayer. Let us pray to our gracious and loving God. Heavenly Father, Creator of the heavens and the earth, I come before you with a heart full of thanksgiving. Your majesty and glory are beyond understanding, and your love is everlasting. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I exalt your name above all names, for you are worthy of all praise and adoration. I give you thanks, Lord, for your unending mercy and grace that you shower upon me and my loved ones each day. Thank you for the blessings you've bestowed upon us, for the gift of life, and for the hope that we have in you. Forgive me, Father, for my trespasses, for the times I faltered, 
and for the moments I've allowed doubt and fear to overshadow my faith. As you have forgiven me, I also extend forgiveness to those who have wronged me, releasing any bitterness, grudges, and resentment. Lord, today I am seeking your divine wisdom and guidance. In areas of my life where I've allowed barriers to obstruct my financial prosperity, I ask for your enlightenment and understanding. Where there's been a lack of faith, Lord, instill in me a heart of trust and belief. In matters of stewardship, grant me the wisdom and discipline to manage your blessings wisely. Lord, lift the burden of debt from my shoulders and lead me into a life of abundance and financial freedom. Fill my heart with generosity that I may be a blessing to others just as you have blessed me. In the mighty name of Jesus, I rebuke any form of hindrance or attack from the enemy that aims to derail my path to prosperity. I bind the spirit of scarcity, lack, stagnation, and fear, and I declare abundance and courage over my life. Let every plan of the adversary to cause financial instability be nullified and instead usher in a season of growth and prosperity. I am grateful that you, Lord, can open doors that no man can shut. I ask for your protection against disappointments, unfavorable agreements, misguided investments, and financial setbacks placing my trust in your abundant provision and steadfast guidance. I decree and declare that doors of opportunity and favor are opening, and what was once hindered is now being released into my life. Lord, as I say this prayer, together, with everyone listening, I am grateful for every heart that is opening before you right now. We stand in agreement, Lord seeking your face and your favor. Bless us, O Lord, with health. Protect us from the snares of the enemy and shield us with your mighty hand. We pray for prosperity not only for ourselves, but also for our loved ones. Bless us indeed and enlarge our territory. May your peace that surpasses all understanding guard our hearts and minds in Christ. Together. We claim victory over our financial struggles. We declare healing over every area of our lives that needs your touch. We declare that everything is working for us and not against us. We shall be the lenders, not the borrowers. We give thanks for your provision, protection, guidance, and deliverance. For you, Lord, shall supply all our needs according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Let your Holy Spirit guide us in all wisdom, and may our steps be ordered by you. We come in agreement as we pray for each other, standing united in faith and purpose. Let your will be done in our lives as it is in heaven. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Thank you, Lord, for hearing and answering my prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. If you were blessed by this message, type the word Amen in the comment section below. I declare that all the blessings of this prayer are now upon you, in the name of Jesus. You can help us to reach more persons and spread the gospel. You can do this by sharing the video with a friend or family member who you know needs the blessing of this prayer and by clicking the like button. Also remember to subscribe to our daily Jesus devotional channel for more videos that will bless your heart and uplift your spirit. We appreciate all those who support us. You're blessed to be a blessing. Now, for those who are listening and you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, 
I urge you to receive God's grace with an open and repentant heart. Start where you are. Your past doesn't matter. Jesus came to seek and to save those that are lost. God loves you. It is not God's will that anyone should perish, but for all to come to repentance. Say this simple salvation prayer for yourself. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner, and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart and life. I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and Savior. Lord Jesus, hear my prayer, I pray. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Amen. Now that you have prayed this prayer, you can ask a pastor to baptize you at a local church and make that decision public. Baptism is a symbol of that decision to follow Jesus. I then encourage you to have fellowship with other believers, to learn more about your new life, and to get to know more about God. Please feel free to leave your prayer request in the comment section so that we can present them before God for your blessings and victory. Also, we invite other believers on the YouTube platform and all over the world to join us and start praying for you right now. And we want you to know that even if you don't see a reply to your prayer request, it doesn't mean that you were not prayed for. Rest assured that we are actively lifting up each request to God that is in accordance with His will. We believe in the power of prayer to bring comfort, healing, and guidance in accordance with God's perfect plan. To God be all the glory. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all.